Kaizo Ironmon is often labeled as the hardest Pokemon challenge, but that's not because it takes an absurd amount of skill, it's because it takes an absurd amount of luck. And you might be wondering, why luck? Well, let me give you a list of its rules. Randomize all Pokemon, movesets, abilities, stats, items, and TMs. Increase trainer and wild Pokemon by 50%. Pick your starter randomly. No using legendaries. No using Pokemon with a base stat total of 600 or higher. You can't use healing moves. Don't give up. That's actually a rule you could see on the website. Only held items allowed are one-time use items, except for Focus Sash. You're only allowed to use TMs awarded by gyms. No killing wild Pokemon. No shopping. You can't use healing items outside of battle. Oh, and you're only allowed one Pokemon. And if it dies, you have to reset the file and re-randomize a whole new one. That's not even all the rules. That's just the, the main ones. Most people play Pokemon Fire Red or Emerald for this challenge, but I already beat those. So we are playing Pokemon Platinum. Main differences for Pokemon Platinum, more Pokemon, more abilities, and the biggest one, the physical special split. And if you don't know what the physical special split is, it's the thing that made Leaf Blade physical and made Sceptile's signature move basically useless for him. We pick up our adventure at file 598, where thanks to a patch, the beginning of the game is actually extremely quick and you get to choose your starter almost immediately. And I say choose loosely, because we actually have to randomize which one we choose, which are either Magmortar, Pillowswine, or Chansey. And normally, I personally have a wheel decide which Pokemon we get. However, do you see that down there? That's a mother freaking Magmortar down in our favorites. That means we don't actually need to have a random starter. We can just choose Magmortar because it's one of our favorites. And since this is Gen 4, you're allowed four favorites. So we acquire our Magmortar, and name her Morty. And we proceed to the largest reset in the game, the first rival fight. And let me put this into perspective. We're on reset 598. 450 of those are most likely losing right here. This battle won't be a walk in the park. I'm just kidding. It was a walk in the park. He decided he didn't even want to hit us. Now, if you watched one of my Kaizo Ironmon videos before, you would realize this is the point where I look at this Pokemon and be like, it's time to pivot because this Pokemon sucks. This Pokemon rules. If I were to make an ideal stat distribution, it's almost identical to what Morty has. The moveset is already starting off very well as well. Blast Burn being an absolute delete button and extrasensory having PP for days. But if I'm gonna be honest, the thing that got me excited about this Pokemon weren't even those two things. It was the ability, simple. And if you don't know what simple is, it's simple to understand. If you get a stat raise, that one stat raise is doubled. However, it also works in reverse. Say you get intimidated, your attack goes down one. It actually goes down Two. And as someone that has beaten this challenge two times by this point with setup Pokemon, I was thinking, wow, setup move equal win. So the plan is simple. Just get a move that increases special attack, we win. And Morty might actually learn moves that increase special attack because she learns a total of 10 moves, plus a possible eight more moves from the TMs that gym leaders give you. So 18 chances, that's pretty good. Now we start the actual run. So we pick up all the items on our way to Route 202, where we will defeat all the trainers and pick up the one item, AKA clear it out. And whoa, breaking news. While we were defeating the second trainer, we beat a Gliscor. That's not really important, but we get our first learned move. Chatter, a 60 base power flying special move, which is great for our coverage and also the reason Chatot was banned from competitive play. We do end up arriving at Jubilife City, picking up all the items here. We find a Lemonade, which is a great early game heal, and we decide to get educated. We go to trainer school, technically a dungeon. Uh, you can only enter it once. You need to do all the story stuff to move on in the game and then leave, AKA here, just talk to Barry. But uh, these children are very weak. So we put them in the dirt 
for extra experience because that's what the run is all about is getting as much experience as possible baby now we clear out route 204 and oh, what breaking news when we defeated the second trainer here as well we got another level up move aurora beam a great coverage move also almost immediately made chatter irrelevant moving on we face our rival again on route 203 and we put him in the dirt and then we clear out route 203 who would have ever guessed and we level up to level 19 where we learn another move overheat which is possibly one of the worst moves a simple pokemon could learn it decreases your special attack stat by two but we're simple so it would be four. Obviously, we don't learn this. But could you imagine if we had contrary instead? Oh, baby. That's a Gen 5 ability, by the way. Now we pass through Orberg Gate, which you could skip the trainers here, but I want all that juicy experience. And this is technically a dungeon, but the first trainer has a float soul that paralyzes us. But even being paralyzed, I decide to face the second trainer anyways, even though you can sneak in behind them. You don't actually need to face them. But like, what's the worst that they could have, right? Like a Palkia? They have a Palkia. But after that quick little scare, we arrive in Orberg City, where we can collect six items and talk to a dude that gives us a free super potion. Dire Hit's the only useful item that we found here. But now we have to do what the children crave. Go to the mines, where we talk to Rorik so he can do his job as a gym leader. But we also defeat both the trainers here. For extra experience, of course. And it's now time for our first gym. Three trainers, nine Pokemon to defeat. And if you're familiar with Kaizo Ironmon for Fire Red, you know the first gym is a massive reset point. Not in this game. You can lose here, but Rorik is not the demon that Brock is. We take down both the trainers relatively easily. The only problem was, I think, a Houndoom with Bubble Beam. But it is now time to face Rorik, who leads with Dark Cry. Let's just not deal with this. We click Blast Burn, Lasered. However, this gives his next Pokemon a free turn, Whalmer, who uses Gravity, which low-key kind of helps us. We Extra Sensory, it doesn't kill, but we get the flinch, so it's basically a free turn anyways. And then we finish it off. Wismer, <laughs> a joke. Butterfree, <laughs> a joke. And we now level up and get another move. Spore, darn, man, that's a good move. That's a good move. So good, it's illegal. Starly now comes out another joke and Rorik's final pokemon is grovile that's so crazy a pokemon that's weak to fire and we happen to have the fire equivalent to hyper beam whoa and with that Rorik gives us our first gym tm once again we are looking for literally any move that boosts our special attack he gives us volt tackle that is trash. We now head back to Jube Life City where we defeat a couple of hooligans. We head back up Route 204 to defeat all the trainers left and head to Floroma Town. Did I pronounce that one right? And the first trainer going to Floroma Town has Dialga. That's scary that we've already seen Dialga, Palkia, and Darkrai. Luckily, the next trainer can't get any worse. Oh, Kyogre, great. We do arrive in Florama City where we get ourselves a free berry and head over to Valley Windworks where we defeat a grunt and then he locks himself inside like a weenie. So we go to Floroma Meadows to beat up his buddies so we can get the key, go back to Valley Windworks, which is a dungeon by the way, but it only has five Pokemon and nothing crazy is gonna show up like a Deoxys defense on the very first trainer that can survive a blast burn. But we do take it out and we earned yet another level up move, Crush Grip, which is actually not that bad of a physical move. However, our physical attack is garbage. Second Grunt, light work, easily defeated. But it's now on to Mars, who's actually a tough battle, although she only has two Pokemon. Her ace is only two levels lower than us. First Mon is Rotom Heat, and by the way, this is Gen 4, so they don't get their real typings yet. We hit it with an extra sensory, which barely does half, and it swings back with an Aqua Tail, and it crits, because of course it does. We are now at 38 HP, and I am scared. So I'm gonna use a super potion, and we get hit by another Aqua Tail. We take out the Rotom next turn, and we get a level up, which should help us with the next Pokemon. And Mars's ace is a Freligator, a Pokemon I am all too familiar with, and it has monster special defense. However, it chooses to never attack us. 
and we easily defeat it. A true homie till the end. We now move on to Route 205, where once again, we just defeat all the trainers and pick up all the items. Palkia shows up again. We find a PP Max, and we get hyper beamed by a Munchlax that almost takes us out. And then we get another PP Max, and we are now going on to Eterna, Eterna Forest, where we find our bestie for the resty, Cheryl, who is perfectly legal to use in Kaizo Ironmon for some reason, because all forests in Kaizo Ironmon are not considered dungeons. So we now go on to clear out the forest, but luckily there won't be anything scary, right? Oh look, the first trainer has Giratina with spatial rend, but it misses, so. Light work. Don't tell me, we also find Deoxys speed. Oh, its special defense is insane, but we do in fact make it out of the forest. It helps that Cheryl heals your Pokemon quite literally after every battle. Thank goodness. Which now means we can take out all the fishermen on Route 205, pick up all the items in Eterna City, and clear out the west side of Route 211. We do run into two more legendaries, Zapdos and Raikou, but that's not that special. Except for we did run into Raikou twice. And now with all the experience acquired, we can go on to finally the second gym. And you know how I said Rorik was easy? Well, Gardenia is the true early game ender. Her gym is 12 total Pokemon, but more importantly, her whole team is level 30 or higher. Once a Pokemon is level 30, it is guaranteed to be some type of fully evolved Pokemon. The first trainer goes down easy, but the second trainer leads with a Suicune. But we kind of luck out. It doesn't have like the most absurd special defense. And their second Mon is a Blaziken, which we easily eliminate as well. And we get another level up move. Sweet Scent. Obviously it's bad. And their third Pokemon is Regigigas. And remember, abilities are randomized. So it doesn't have slow start. But we do have that delete button that has the words blast burn on it. But that's a crazy team. Suicune, Blaziken, Regigigas. And the final trainer has a wall rain, which we also blast burn. It is now time for the real test, Gardena. She leads with a low punny. So naturally we start with an extra sensory and Gardena said, oh, oh. I want that move and sketches it. But at this point, she uses a super potion. It doesn't matter. We just spam extra sensory and we win. But her next Pokemon, Lugia, of course, another box legendary. We hit Aurora Beam and oh my gosh, we won't even be able to take it out in three hits, but it doesn't choose to hit us. It curses up instead. Turn two, we Aurora Beam. They curse again. Turn three, I consider pressing Blast Burn here, However, I am high off that Copium, and I believe Aurora Beam will take out that amount of health. I'm wrong. And Lugia hits us with its first move, Rock Throw, which does 54 damage. However, for a plus two attack move on a legendary Pokemon, that's a really low amount of damage. So we finish it off next turn. Gardena now sends out Vaporeon. The people want to know, why do you have Low Punny and Vaporeon on your team, Gardena? The people want to know. We extra sensory. We one shot the Vaporeon. So Vaporeon might have low special defense. Dugong is up next. Extra sensory. It does around half and it hits us with spatial rend, but it doesn't really do much damage to us. So we can assume that Dugong does not have good special attack. The next extra sensory leaves one HP. We get rended again, which makes Marty use the berry juice that I gave it for safekeeping but I guess I'm not getting that back. We finish off the Dugong. Gardena goes on to her next Pokemon, Executor. We could click Blast Burn here, but I don't want to be stuck for a turn, so I click Aurora Beam instead. It survives and supersonics us. We are now confused. But next turn, Morty breaks through confusion and finishes it off. Going to Gardena's final Pokemon, Manetric. And I don't even want to leave it up the chance. So I click Blast Burn, but we're still confused. But guess what? We break through and then we miss and they nasty plot. Next turn, we smack ourselves in the face. Manetric has one of the worst abilities in the game. Truant, Trant, Trant. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's Slacking's ability. Blast Burn again and the Manetric is obliterated. And with Gardena being defeated there, we get another Gym TM, another possibility to get a special attacking boosting move. And she gives us 
double slap. Yay! So now the world opens up just a little bit because we can now use the HM cut. So we go to the exterior of Eterna Forest to get all the items there. And then we also head to the old chateau. Time for us to go to the Team Galactic building. And you guessed it, it's a dungeon. And we do manage to defeat every single trainer in here and make our way to Commander Jupiter, who I have lost to a surprising amount of times. Jupiter leads with a bronze on, which is scary because we kind of only have Blast Burn for it, which will leave us open for a turn against their ace. I don't know if Jupiter is a guy or a girl but we click it anyways, and it misses. And the Bronzong decides to tickle us, which sucks because we're simple. It just decreases our attack, but more importantly, our defense by two stages. We blast burn again, lasered. And Jupiter's ace is a masquerade who uses their free turn to use skill swap, no longer making us simple, which was a terrible play on their part. I click Aurora Beam because one, it doesn't miss like Blast Burn, and two, Masquerade only has a BST of 414. So if it survives this, it has way too much special defense and HP for them to have meaningful stats in anything else. However, if it did survive and had the move Mirror Coat or Metal Burst, uh, we now acquire the Explorer Kit, not because we use it, but it's required for the story. Get an egg from Cynthia and acquire a bike. We now clear out routes 206, 207, and while we're doing that, one of them has a late guardian, the other one has God, and we see another Zapdos. The only reason I'm pointing out all these legendaries is because you don't see this many normally. But after defeating a love disc, Morty gets up to level 43, where it learns yet another level up move, Heal Order, which is a really good move. However, Super illegal for Kaizo Ironmon. All healing moves are illegal for Kaizo Ironmon. Pretty cool thing about Pokemon Platinum is after the second gym, trainers actually start showing up in Pokemon Center so you can get extra experience. And let me just say, our item lock on HP healing items has been abysmal. So after defeating every trainer and picking up all the items on Route 206 and 207, you go to Wayward Cave. This has two parts. One is just filled with items, which of course every single one of them that we picked up is useless. And the other part has a bunch of trainers to face. This has nothing to do with the story. In fact, you could actually just skip this completely if you wanted to, but we want that extra experience. There's also extra items to get in here as well because we kind of need healing item. And we actually do manage to defeat literally every trainer in here, which is kind of rare to happen with a runner. And we are awarded with one singular energy powder. You also might be thinking, wait, can't you just go all the way to the end and pick up Mira and then you can heal after every battle? Well, guess what? That's illegal. That little girl can stay stuck in this cave. She can hold that L. We now make our way through Mount Cornet and great news. We get another healing item. Country Time Lemonade. This is not sponsored, by the way. We now clear out Route 208. We pick up a soda pop, where we now arrive in Hearthorn City, where we now need to face the third gym, Fantina's gym. And I'll let you in on a little known secret in the Kaizo Ironmon community, okay? Once you beat Brock in Fire Red, there's really like no other really hard challenge until you face like Koga. But in Pokemon Platinum, let me tell you, Every single gym can end your existence. Fantina's gym has 17 Pokemon. And yes, Morty might be level 49 at this point, but the real challenge in Kaizo Ironmon is typically in the gyms, getting your HP chipped away, and then you're just very weak for the gym leader. That wouldn't really happen if you just laser every Pokemon in the gym. Cacturn, lasered. Mawile, lasered. Typhlosion, who's faster than us for some reason. That's insane. He's level 35 and has more than 148 speed. And it uses tri-attack. And we get frozen. So we use an ice heal. We extra sensory. They endure. They just keep on holding on. We extra sensory again. Out of there. Also, it was like doing no damage. It is literally all speed, nothing else. Miltank, lasered. Zero laser. Dugong, but thanks to Gardena's gym, we know it has good special defense. Blast burn, laser, jump pluff, laser. Weavile, blast burn, because I don't want to get hit by this thing. Then Omnistar, Lord Helix himself, hits us with Shadow Sneak, then survives extra sensory, but then we just replay the same turn again. Flareon, laser. Wigglytuff survives extra sensory, uses cosmic power, and has speed boost. 
potentially could turn into a run ender later in the run, but we finish it off next turn. But with that, we have defeated every single trainer before Fantina. And our HP is actually looking pretty good. Her lead, Corsola, lasered. And now a fish who barely holds on but gets flinched. This is best case scenario for us because now Fantina will waste one of her super potions and we just eliminate it next turn anyways. And next up is Lugia. Woo, another gym leader with yet another legendary. However, the level difference between us and the Lugia now a little bit more significant. So we can three shot it with Aurora Beam. And it decides that it wants to spam curse anyways and never hits us. We now see Omnistar again. We know it survives extra sensory, but there's not really another move for us to click. So we just do that. It shadow sneaks. Basically all the damage that has been done to us up until this point has just been all Omnistar shadow sneaks. And our extra sensory crits, baby and it eliminates that threat. And Fantina throws out another Omnistar. Quite literally, one sixth of all the Pokemon in this gym have been Omnistar. We click Extra Sensory again. This thing has a berry because this is Fantina's ace and it's sweet sense. And now my mind is thinking Omnistar could be a threat, but it's moves kind of suck. She heals here, which kind of surprises me, but I'm okay with it. And it gets its one last hit in with Shadow Sneak and we finish it off, which leads to her final Pokemon, which is Dugdrio. And I'm sorry, 405 BST is just not gonna cut it these days. And with one final laser, we defeat Fantana, which leads to another Gym TM, another chance to get a special attacking boosting move. And she gives us Hydro Pump, which is an interesting move and Morty can learn it. I hold off on it for now, but I always have it in the back of my head. Immediately after beating Fantina, we have another rival fight, which sucks because Barry's team here is not bad. I have lost here. So he leads Chimeco. I press Chatter here because it's BST is so low. I was like, no way it has good special defense. Well, joke's on me, it has great special defense and it also uses Aqua Ring. So it's healing after every turn as well. Great. So naturally, I don't wanna deal with that. I just click Blast Burn, get it out of here. Barry now sends out Noctowl who has a free turn and they click Bone Meringue and it misses. Huge, because I think that would have done like so much damage. We Aurora Beam. Lasered. His ace, which once was that pillow swine back in the day, has now evolved into a Rhyperior. Kind of scary, but we click Aurora Beam here. We do nearly half his HP in damage, and it decides to minimize. I don't know why nothing wants to hit Morty. It's kind of confusing, but whatever. Next turn, I click Aurora Beam, which is actually a misplay, because true Pokemon pros know that extra sensory actually does double damage on Pokemon that have minimized, but it barely holds on anyways. Extra sensory would have for sure taken out, but luckily it's just gonna hit like a useless move. Lucky for me. The secondary effect of Aurora Beam actually activated twice on Rhyperior, lowering its attack stat by two stages. <laughs> Self-destruct only doing 47 damage is crazy. Leading to Barry's final Pokemon, Omnistar. What is going on? Why are there so many of these things? We just extra sensory twice and we went. Onward to Route 209, where naturally we clear out all the trainers and pick up all the items. And while we face the first guy on the route, we level up the level 52. Another level up move and we learn Crunch, which is a pretty good move, but remember, physical special split in this game, and we have no physical attack. Also, if you weren't aware, we kind of play God in this run. You change the time so you can face certain trainers at certain points of the day. We finish up Route 209. Don't worry about the Lost Tower. We do that a little bit later. And we make our way to Sol... Solakion? Solakion Town? Is that how you pronounce that? What the heck? Well, they have ruins there and you get a bunch of items there. This is also where you get the HM for Defog. We continue on our voyage and clear out the southern part of Route 210 and we find a berry juice. 
We are like actually getting no heals. We have to be excited for this. And then we move on to route 215, where we also clear out the trainers and pick up all the items, which all the items, you guessed it, are trash. And we arrive in Veilstone City where there are five items to pick up. And you guessed it, no healing items. And you might be thinking, ooh, Veilstone City, is it gym time? Nope. More training on to Route 214. And guess what? More training on to Route 213, where we level up to 58 and Morty wants to learn synthesis. That's illegal. Well, right back to grinding and picking up crappy items. But we arrive in Pasadoria City, where we can go to this house and see moves that we might have missed out on. And Morty could have had pedal dance. Uh, the odds of us getting a special attacking increasing move are slowly diminishing. But perhaps our item luck could finally turn around by going into the Great Marsh, which is just the safari zone for this game. And there are 14 items here. Surely we can pick up something good, right? There's 14 of them. I'm desperate here. Like even a Moo Moo Milk would be great. Oh, nothing. Yay. But at this point, it is now time to face another gym. Just kidding, it's more of the training arc, baby. Route 212 so we can get more items and more levels. There's a four item stretch here that is crazy. A soda pop, a lumberry, a heal powder, and the most important item that we have picked up so far, a max potion. Wow, and it only took us three hours to get a good healing item. But now with all the routes cleared out, that's right, it's time to go back to the cafe cabin just to defeat like three trainers. Each one has only like one Pokemon and they're pretty low level compared to Morty at this point. So easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. And with that defeated, we can finally move on to the Lost Tower. But Morty also clears out the Lost Tower extremely easily. Now with all the items picked up and all the trainers defeated, it is now time to finally face the gym at Veilstone City. And Veilstone City's gym is probably the easiest one in all this game for three reasons. The level difference is more significant than all the other gyms. Two, there's not many trainers to defeat in here. And three, Maylene is an honorable fighter and doesn't put a berry on her ace or use any healing items. Respect. That being said, I have lost here before, so it's definitely not free. But we also roll through literally every single one of the Pokemon in here before facing Maylene, except for a Zangus did survive an extra century. Pretty good special defense. And after defeating the children's puzzle that is in Maylene's gym, we get to face Maylene. Leafy on first, and let me tell you, you would think the dopamine rush for seeing a Pokemon that you know you have a super effective move for would like go away over the, like the past decade of me playing Pokemon. What do you mean it survived and then body slammed us and paralyzed us? So I could heal off the paralysis here, but like I don't want to get body slammed again and just get paralyzed again. So I take out the leafy on here and on the beauty fly that Maylene sends out, I heal off the para. Thing to note, if this beauty fly decided to para song here, the run would have been over. As a Kaizo Ironmon runner, you always have it in the back of your mind that you're just one song away. Always one song away. But it digs instead. There's nothing for us to really do here. So we just get hit by dig and then eliminate it with Aurora Beam. And Maylene's next Pokemon is Latios and has every single gym leader had some type of legendary or mythical Pokemon? This is some bullshit. So we Aurora Beam, they curse. I feel like I'm going crazy. I keep on seeing the same thing over and over again, but whatever, we finish it off. Clefable, we extra sensory, it survives. Does this whole entire team just have good special defense? We get headbutted. We finish it off with a chat. Her ugly comes out, also survives an extra sensory. And let me take this moment here to be like, our special attack stat is insane. Like it's crazy that all these Mon are not getting one shot. We get slashed. We finish it off next turn. And Maylene's final Pokemon is an Alakazam which we just blast burn because I'm fed up with all these Pokemon surviving. We earn ourselves another gym TM. And please, Maylene, you could change the fate of this entire run by just giving us something that increases our special attack. And she gives us Brick Brick. 
Can I even be mad? It's like pretty on brand. And now we defeat a couple of galactic grunts with our boy. What is this guy's name? Lucas. We are now given the HM for fly, which allows us to get to our next destination very quick, Passatoria City for yet another gym battle. Just kidding. Rival fight before you walk into the door. But I'm gonna be honest, we just like destroy his entire team. Like it wasn't even a competition. Next up is Crasher Wake. And unlike Maylene, he does not fight with honor. He uses two hyper potions and a citrus berry. Not to mention he has 13 Pokemon that we have to defeat before him all around the same level as Maylene's Pokemon. We do take down the first three trainers pretty easily. But on the fourth trainer, they lead an Aggron. And uh, we don't really have anything for Aggron. Sure would be nice if we learned Hydro Pump by this point. Uh, so we have to Blast Burn, which causes a Dodrio to have a free turn against us and can hit us with Aero Blast. And it does 73 damage. Now we hit it with Aurora Beam and it survives. But thank goodness the AI are morons and it clicks hidden power for some reason. Another Aeroblast would have put us in a very rough spot. And their last one is an Articuno, but we've already faced a few Articunos by this point and we know its special defense is crap. And now we are one trainer away from facing Crasher Wig and they lead a Pillow Swine. But we know Pillow Swine has a lot of special defense from prior Pillow Swine that we have faced. But I don't want a Blast Burn here because we only have two of those left and I kind of want to keep both of them for Crasher Wake just in case. So I click Extra Sensory, but uh-oh, disaster. It hits us with Metal Burst. And for the people who don't know what Metal Burst is, it's like the baby cousin of Counter and Mirror Coat, except for it works on both special and physical moves. After taking out the Mammo Swine, a Mantine comes out, and this is what we'll heal up against, but it rock blasts us, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, it did like no damage, so Mantine has like no attack stat. So we end up eliminating the Mantine, Staraptor comes out, easily lasered, and we now learn our final level up move, Quick Attack. Useless for us. We now stand before Crasher Wake, 150 HP down, and I make an executive decision. We are basically pressing chatter almost 0% of the time. That slot would be much better with Hydro Pump. And it's time to face Crasher Wake. He leads a Miss Magus, and we have seen Miss Magus quite a few times and have lasered it every single time. And it's no different this time. Plusle's the next Mon, and it's really, really weak. And we also already know that it has good special defense. It will survive an extra sensory. So I use a lemonade here to make the rest of the battle even safer. And it takes its free turn to use bulk up. A welcome sight, honestly. We extra sensory, they bulk up again. And this is when Crasher Wake wastes one of his hyper potions. And it doesn't really matter because as long as you two shot a Pokemon after they heal, they can't hit you with anything anyways. And Crasher Wake sends out a Sharpedo. Ironically, one of the Pokemon that would have been covered by Chatter. However, it has Drizzle. So that powers up our Hydro Pump, making Hydro Pump actually more powerful than Chatter in this scenario. We hit Hydro Pump. It sends it into Citrus Berry range, it heals, and it Cotton Spores us, lowering our speed by two stages, or should I say, Simple lowers it by four stages, we are super slow. The Sharpedo is now faster than us. It hits us with Thunderbolt and it gets the 10% chance to paralyze us. And then we get fully parried. But also, the Sharpedo has like no special attack. 12 damage from Thunderbolt, are you kidding me? That's nothing. And although we have not been picking up that many HP healing items, we've actually been picking up so many status heals, it's wild. So we do heal off the paralysis immediately. And then we end up eliminating it next turn. Melodic, another scary mon to see, but there's nothing to really think about doing here. Let's click extra sensory. That's all we gotta do. Remember, our speed is still lower, so we're probably gonna be slower than everything that faces us in the rest of the gym. But we also know Melodic has absurdly good special defense as well. It's probably gonna take us like three extra sensories to take it out. We are now down to 118 HP. Crash Awake still has two Pokemon left. 
And Crasher Wake sends out a godsend, Doug Drio, a super low BST mon that we have already seen on a gym leader. However, since our speed is still lowered, the Doug Drio is faster than us and can get a defend order up, making it so our Aurora Beam does not one shot it. Since we sent it into heal range, Crasher Wake uses a hyper potion here. And with its one turn that it can outspeed us, it gets its one hit in with Dizzy Punch. And thank goodness, it didn't confuse us. And Crasher Wake's final Pokemon is Dugong. I feel like we've seen this Pokemon like so many times now, but of course it has good special defense. So it will survive an extra sensory. I am willing to click extra sensory twice instead of clicking blast burn here and potentially just missing over and over again and wasting turns. Dugong is faster than us, but it uses the move Fire Fang. <laughs> laughable it only did five damage we hit an extra sensory and it crits baby the crit mattered and we have defeated crasher wakes gym using two lemonades is kind of sad especially since our hp items are so low and but hey a living pokemon is better than a dead pokemon and we get a tm from crasher wake this man right here could change the entire course of the entire run with this one move he gives us bubble beam and i'm gonna be honest i like bubble beam significantly more than hydro pump just because it's a hundred accurate and i would much rather have that as a move so i go to try to learn it immediately but morty doesn't wanna they're not all learnable it's actually a 50 50 chance if you can learn the gym's TM. But with the gym down, we chased out a Team Galactic grunt, put him in the dirt, see Cynthia, she gives us a secret potion. We now gain access to the northern part of Route 210. And luckily at this point, none of the overworld trainers are like any threat to us. Thank goodness we have so much freaking health. After that little scare, we find another max potion, massive. But we make it through all of Route 210 go to Celestic Town, where we defeat a Team Galactic Grunt. And before we go into the ruins, we just go on to Route 211 and clear out all the trainers and the items there as well. But once you clear out Route 211, you have to go into the Celestic Ruins, where we face Cyrus, whose team is just as strong as Crasher Wakes. And Cyrus starts the battle with quite literally one of the worst possible Pokemon we could ever see, Politoed. One, its ability is Sandstream, so we are getting knocked for damage every single turn, unless some other Pokemon comes out and sets up another weather condition. Two, its special defense is actually upsetting. We do like no damage to this thing. And to see this at the beginning of the battle is messed up. The only thing that this Politoed doesn't have that can mess with us is actual moves to do real damage to us. So we chip it down basically all the way down to one HP. And I am hoping that Sandstorm can take out this little sliver of HP. But guess what? It doesn't. So Cyrus is like, oh, wow, this is going swimmingly. Let me heal this Politoed. So we have to go through that whole rigmarole again. So before we even face the second Pokemon, we are down 143 HP just because of that stupid Politoed and his mother frickin' Sandstream. And just to make this battle a little bit safer, on his second Pokemon, I use a Soda Pop immediately and the Kangaskhan uses Torment, which is a move that forces you to not be able to click the same move two times in a row. But we do take out Kangaskhan with an Aurora Beam. Mr. Mime now comes out. We click Hydro Pump because we're tormented and Lord Helix makes another return. And we know it's special defense is crazy. Extra Sensory doesn't even do half damage anymore. And the Sandstorm damage just keeps on racking up. So we have to use another soda pop just so we can make it through this battle. But looking at its HP, I think it's in hydro pump range. Plus we're tormented. So I can't really click extra sensory again. And the other two moves are 
kind of useless against him. And I was right, and Lord Helix is eliminated. Farfetch'd is the next Pokemon, and I am very happy to see this. It is a low BST Pokemon that we have a super effective move for. Surely we will eliminate it with Aurora Beam. We do not eliminate it with the Aurora Beam. And he secret powers us. We are now down to 55 HP. I use another one of our precious heals, Energy Powder. We now eliminate it with Extra Sensory because once again, Tormented can't use the Aurora Beam again. And Cyrus's final Pokemon, oh, surprise, surprise, Dugong again? I thought this game was supposed to be randomized. And at this point, I am probably getting a little mad in this battle. Sandstorm taking us for like a million damage. All these Mon that don't go down in one shot. I click Blast Burn and we take out the Dugong. The only thing that went well for us in that battle was the fact that we didn't use any of our max potions. Thank goodness. And we now know Politoed, enemy number one. And this is where we acquire the HM for Surf. And if you're wondering, no, you can't teach HMs to your main Mon. But now since we have Surf, we have unlocked the ability to pick up like so many items, like millions of them. And by millions, I mean 28. And notable items that we picked up, <gasps> one full restore. It's an incredible item, but that was the only one. So after going one for 28 on good items, it is time to fly to Sand Gem Town and go to Route 219, 220, and 221 and clear out, once again, all the trainers and pick up all the items. And honestly, everything here was super uneventful. Except for an Umbreon that went boom on us. Uh, scared us a little bit. Once you're done with that, you fly over to Jube Life City, go to Route 218, Clear that out as well. And once you reach Cantalave City, you actually fly back to Passatoria City, uh, where you clear out Route 113. You also face one last dude on Route 208, where you now go to the Pokemon Mansion, pick up the two items there, and face the maids, which is a challenge I actually failed because I was too good. You have to defeat four maids. Each one has one Pokemon in five turns. Exactly five turns. I defeated them in four. Heck yeah. And this is when I decide to do the Seven Stars restaurant at uh, Valor Lakefront. You can actually leave this for later in the run, but it's five double battles. And now we go to Fuego Ironworks, clear that out. Or so I think, I actually think I missed an item here. Could have changed the entire run. That thing is a four store right there waiting for us. Where now we fly back to Cantalave City and face our arrival on the bridge which is very easily defeated. We literally one-shot every single one of his Pokemon. We now arrive at the Iron Island, which is kind of a unique scenario in Kaizo Ironmon because there's this guy, Riley, on the inside of there. Great guy. After every battle, he heals your Pokemon. Well, that seems busted, doesn't it? Well, let's get rid of that. What you actually have to do is find Riley immediately, do the two mandatory battles, and then the final double battle at the end to get rid of Riley. And then you can go through the entire dungeon however you would like. And we find an absolute threat to Morty. Huntail. One, it can survive an extra sensory. Two, it has hydro pump. Three, 26 levels lower than us. It did 150 damage. It might just end the run if we are at the same level. But luckily, this was on one of the battles that Riley was here for us. So we do heal afterwards, and then we say goodbye to Riley forever. And then we proceed to clear out the rest of the Iron Island. And Iron Island actually has a decent amount of items in it. It has 20 whole items. And we find an energy root, which quite literally might have just saved the run. We also picked up two max ethers, which is kind of huge for us because the only PP recovery item that we had besides that was a Lepa Berry. We did get a healing item and we didn't need to use a healing item, more importantly. All around a win for uh, the Iron Isle. But after doing the Iron Island, it's time for the sixth gym, 
Byron. Before we face Byron, we have to take out all of his lackeys. And the moment we walk into the gym, guess what is the first Pokemon we run into? A mother freaking Huntail. What is this? But they threw, they actually clicked Wish instead of Hydro Pump. Ha, this gym could have been so rough off the jump if they just clicked Hydro Pump there. And thank goodness it didn't hit us because you have to take in effect what happened next. Ooh, we've seen a lot of Jolteons and we one-shot them every single time. Well, I believe. No! Just to make sure that Morty can keep on keeping on, we're gonna have to use a massive heal here. But eventually we do take out every trainer in Byron's gym and we are face to face with Byron with 170 HP out of our 310. And before facing Byron, I take off the Petra Berry that I was holding and put on a Citrus Berry so we can get a free heal and hopefully we can avoid using another big heal. He leaves an area dose, which is a great Fine. Low BST, extra sensory, our strongest accurate move is super effective. I want to see Ariadoses the entire game, unless it doesn't die to extra sensory, in which case I don't want to see Ariados at all. If I can't one shot you, I don't want to see you. And since we're going to be falling asleep and since it survives extra sensory, its special defense and HP have to be really good. It probably has no other stats. Uh, I use a baby heal here since they are going to heal here as well. We use a potion. And since we're asleep, and I also don't think this Eridos can do anything to us, we use an awakening to wake ourselves up. And it uses Sucker Punch, which is great to see because it fails if we don't attack. And we proceed the extra sensory only taking one Sucker Punch, leaving us at 169 HP. Nice. Next out is Gyarados, which is a Pokemon we have not seen the entire run. We extra sensory and it doesn't even do half damage. However, it does flinch, which could have just saved our entire skins. We have no idea how powerful this Gyarados is. We extra sensory again. This time it doesn't flinch. It double edges us. It does a fairly significant amount of damage, but it does proc our citrus berry and we eliminate the Gyarados with one last extra sensory. And then Arbok is sent out and then Arbok is lasered. Then Crobat is sent out and Crobat is lasered. And then Lantern is sent out. We don't laser Lantern, but it hits us with like ring out, but we do finish off the Lantern the next turn. And Byron's final Mon is Fero which is a Pokemon we have taken out with Aurora Beam, one shot every single time, and it's no different here. Which means we have now acquired our sixth gym badge, and more importantly, a chance to get a special attack increasing move. And he gives us, I have no idea what he gave us, Steel Wing. Isn't Byron normally a Steel type trainer? Did all three of the last gym leaders give us TMs on brand? Uh, they're supposed to be randomized, I swear. Now we skip on over to the Cantalave library where we go to the upstairs and then hear a boom. Then we proceed over to Lake Valor to stop whatever shenanigans Team Galactic's getting up to over there. But eventually we face Commander Saturn. They have a s somewhat strong team. We defeat them very easily. And now we go immediately over to Lake Veri Verity? 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 Lake Veridi? Defeat all the trainers there. Face Commander Mars, who goes down also pretty easily. However, her team actually gives us information on Sea King and Stantler, which could be useful for later in the run. At which point, it is now time to go to Mount Cornet, which actually has zero trainers in there, but there are 20 items to pick up. Notable ones? We found a rare candy, massive, and a fresh one. We are now at Route 216, and you know the drill by this point. Defeat all the trainers, pick up all the items, and guess what we do after we're done with Route 216? Heh, <laughs> you would have never guessed. We go to Route 217 and defeat all the trainers there and pick up all the items. Although there's a ton of items on Route 217. There's like 14 of them. I counted. And one of the items that we acquire on this route is an X special, which raises our special attack. And if you did not know this already, simple still boosts battle items. We also acquire another PP max as well. And then we end up at Snow Point City. 
and this might blow your mind. Well, after picking up the two items that are in the city, there's nothing else to do. We just have to defeat the gym. And there are a total of 18 Pokemon in this gym. Every single one of them, except for one, is over level 60. And I bet you that one that's not level 60 is some cute little guy that we don't need to worry. Oh, it's a Kyogre. It doesn't do that much damage to us. Only 32? I'll take that from a legendary. And the second trainer we face has a Suicune, which now has good special defense, survives an extra sensory from us, and now also has Earthquake which crit us as well. We're having a great time in this gym already. <laughs> great time. And I do something that puts the entire run in jeopardy here. I risk a double crit. Because if I heal here, I am going to get hit by an extra earthquake that I would have not needed to get hit by otherwise. It pays off. But with eight more Pokemon to defeat before we even face the gym leader, I'm gonna be trying to use all the citrus berries we have to heal my Pokemon as much as I can. However, the very next Pokemon we face is a Melodic. And after taking a hit from the Melodic, I realize, wow, this thing has no damage. So I just throw a bunch of small healing items at Morty and she can just have those. But uh-oh, bad news bears, next Pokemon is Starmie, another threat to us because it brings us back down to low HP just causing me to put on another citrus berry. And then we realize we can't even one shot a Swalot. It hits us with Aeroblast. We're back down to 139 HP. I'm sad. This gym is extremely rough. And after defeating the children's puzzle in this gym that I did not have any problem with whatsoever, we now come face to face with the gym leader of this gym, whose name I'm not going to say unless you click that subscribe button. I'll wait. Morty standing in front of Candace, Candace what? With only 139 HP is very worrying. I put on a Petcha Berry and strap in. Candace's first Pokemon, Frostlass. I like it, on brand. We click extra sensory as we always do. And the Frostlass takes it very well and we get Cross Chop. I'm a little bit scared because Cross Chop has a high crit ratio and I'm not trying to get crit in these streets. So I click Hydro Pump, risking a miss, but I know it will eliminate. Next up is Sceptile, which sucks to see because we have actually seen so many Sceptiles throughout the entire run. We know the special defense is crazy. So either we click Aurora Beam and most likely take a hit from Volt Tackle or we click Blast Burn and just get it out of here. And I choose to just get it out of here, leaving Candace's next Pokemon with a free turn, Wishcast. And Candace uses Harden. <laughs> I don't care what they say about you, Candace. Even if they make a joke out of your name, you're okay in my book. We click Extra Sensory and it crits, baby. Wishcast down. Next up is Drifblim which we have seen earlier and we know survives an Aurora Beam and they use Calm Mind. <laughs> if only we had that move. <sighs> With that amount of HP and an increased special defense stat, Aurora Beam will most likely still not kill. However, I don't think Drift Bloom really has anything that hits us hard. I was wrong. It uses Egg Bomb. It did 50. Now Drift Bloom is definitely in Candace's heal range. And I'm sitting here looking at our HP, sitting at a measly 67, and I have to bite the bullet. I have to use one of our most precious heals. Max Potion. And all I do from here on out is spam Aurora Beam until this balloon is out of here. Second to last Pokemon, Ariados. And we know this is not going to be eliminated by an extra sensory but I also don't think it has anything for us. So we click extra sensory. Why did this one die to it? This now leads to Candace's final Pokemon, Hariyama. And our HP is so high, I don't fear anything. So I'm just gonna spam extra sensory and we win. We defeat Candace, we acquire the seventh gym badge and more importantly, Candace can change the run. She can give us a move that we saw her use. Calm mind. 
It could change us completely and utterly forever. And she gives us endure. Yeah, that's useless. I'm in shambles. Morty is in shambles. Our heels are in shambles. However, we do now have the HM for rock climb, which can get us a decent amount of items. We only find fresh water. And it is now time for galactic hideout, baby. And if I'm gonna be honest, it's super easy. Well, I should clarify, the dungeon part is super easy. We are super over leveled for the trainers in this part. However, that doesn't mean the entire thing is easy. There are a lot of items to pick up and we do find one good one. And eventually we end up right in front of Cyrus. And you know how I said the dungeon part is not very hard? I mean, look at Morty. Morty has lost like only what? Like I actually didn't write it down, but I want to say it's like five HP. Oh, it's seven HP. I did write it down. However, Cyrus is basically just as difficult as a gym leader. Cyrus starts with a Meginium. And we have actually seen a decent amount of Meginiums. And we have lasered every single one of them with Aurora Beam. Except for not this time. They use Shadow Force. We need to just wait out and get hit by, but then we eliminate it next turn. Hitmon Lee is next. We laser it, easy. Breloom is next, which we've been one-shotting the entire time because of Chatter, which is four times super effective. Extra Sensory does not take it out. It hits us with Hammer Arm, probably one of the stronger fighting moves it could have hit us with. But Cyrus does waste a healing item here. And we continue our Extra Sensory spam. Grand Bull which we've seen earlier in the run and we believe has very bad special defense, continues to make us believe it has bad special defense. And now we see Gyarados, which we know has really good special defense. We extra sensory. It hits us with double edge and that double edge is hitting. So I make an executive decision. I want this Gyarados out of here. And Blast Burn is still significantly stronger than Extra Sensory is, even when it's resisted. So we do click Blast Burn, and it barely holds on. And this Gyarados uses a Citrus Berry, which is huge for itself, because the double edge that it hits this turn, its recoil would have taken it out. We got incredibly lucky here, because one, if the Gyarados didn't have a Citrus Berry here and took itself out, the next Pokemon would have saw us with 15 HP and would have had a free turn. Two, this Gyarados's double edge sent itself back into heal range, so it won't attack us again. Instead, Cyrus will use a healing item here. We got incredibly lucky that we did not get punished. And the worst part about this is I think Gyarados does so much damage to us so quickly and is so tanky. We might need to use a max potion here. We need a miracle to happen. And to make things even worse, it misballs us, which one, did a lot of damage to us, and two, Mistball's secondary effect is a 50% chance to lower special attack. Guess what it did? It lowered our special attack. So we're even doing less damage against this Gyarados. So our special attack is halved right now. Everything's falling apart. And through hard work and a lot of extra sensories, the Gyarados finally goes down. But we are back down to 85 HP. And Cyrus's final Pokemon is Celebi. We've seen Celebi before, and I know I have eliminated Celebi in one shot with an Aurora Beam. So imagine how much a Blast Burn would do. Even with our special attack halved, it should eliminate. The scariest part about clicking this Blast Burn is the 90 accuracy, but it hits and Cyrus goes down. This isn't even the last battle in the Galactic Hideout we still need to face Commander Saturn. And Saturn's Pokemon are a tiny bit weaker, but we still only have 85 HP. They lead a Skunk Tank. And I know we don't eliminate this in one shot, so I use a Moo Moo Milk here. Hoping that our late game item pickup luck completely turns around compared to how the rest of the run has been going. And they decide not to hit us. They click Bulk Up instead. So we click Aurora Beam next turn. They bulk up instead. Could you have just told me earlier that you weren't going to hit me? I mean, I, I didn't need to heal there. We finish it off with Aurora Beam. Gastrodon is next, which we've seen three other ones, and we have eliminated those with one extra sensory every single time. And of course, this one survives. 
but they set up a Doom Desire, which I'm kind of okay with. We finish off the Gastrodon and Saturn sends out their last Pokemon, Hippowdon, who has been eliminated by a Aurora Beam every single time we have seen it. And of course it was not eliminated this time. But they click Skull Bash and we get hit by the Doom Desire and we finish off the Hippowdon next turn. It turns out we didn't need to use that Moo Moo Milk at all. Oh well. Now at this point, I believe our only healing items are two potions, a berry juice, and one full restore. Now with probably the two scariest battles of the entire game out of the way, it is now time for us to go back to Mount Cornet. Naturally, there's a bunch of items to collect and battles to be had. And while making our way to the top, oh my gosh, we find a hyper potion. And we also find another PP Max, which makes our fourth one. So I use one on Blast Burn, one on Hydro Pump, a potion, yay, and yet another PP Max. However, I do need to use our fresh water and like all our potions and berry juices here. All these trainers are actually whittling us down like little by little, and we do need decent HP for the top of the summit. We do eventually make it all the way to the top to the spear pillar, where we have to defeat a couple of double battles. Double battles are the worst in Kaizo Ironmon because you need to go in with two Pokemon and your HM homie who's been flying you around everywhere can't attack. So you actually need to throw Pokeballs instead. However, in the first double battle, one of the Pokemon flatter us, which is a move that increases the opposing Pokemon's special attack stat, but makes them confused. But that is also a trade-off I am willing to take. After we defeat that first double battle, it's time for me and Barry to handle a couple of commanders. And we see a Typhlosion, which is one of the best Pokemon for us to see because it has Flatter to increase our special attack. This is our best friend right here. And just because of that, we laser every single Pokemon in this battle. And Barry heals your Pokemon after this battle as well, which is chef's kiss. And it is now time to go into Distortion World. And I didn't know this as a child and didn't remember this, but there is literally nothing here. No items to get, no trainers to face, except for Cyrus all the way at the end. It's a waste of time. And this time, Cyrus leads with a quillfish. And people that have watched my prior videos knows we love a person that leads with a quillfish. So we extrasensory it. It survives. And then it proceeds to hit us with literally the strongest rock move in the game, Head Smash. Dude, Cyrus cannot give us a break. Every single one of his battles have been the worst. However, this does put the Quillfish into heal range and we just finish it off with a couple of extra sensories. Vaporeon is next and Laser. Cyrus's next Pokemon, the Barrel which is actually his ace, and we immediately send it into Citrus Berry range, and it wastes its turn on Magnet Rise. And just to make sure that it's gonna croak, Morty crits their next extra sensory on this barrel. Cyrus then sends out a fish, and we know this fish survives an extra sensory. And it now knows Seismic Toss, which is kind of annoying because no matter what their stats are, it's gonna just do 71 damage every single time. But we do eliminate the Sea King in two turns. Shininja is next, which is funny to see. We have Shininja coverage, but our only Shininja coverage is Blast Burn, which feels like a little bit of overkill. And now Cyrus is on to his final Pokemon, Staraptor, and thank goodness, this team is significantly worse than his prior two. I don't know if we could have gone through another one of those Cyrus battles right here. So we Aurora beam the Staraptor twice, and it's now time to face Giratina. I mean, Flaffy. And of course, that's the most terrifying thing in the world, so we have to run away from it. And we now go to the lab for the first time and the only time in the entire run of Pokemon Platinum. And now at this point, you head over to the Valor Lakefront so you can head over to Route 222 to pick up items and defeat some trainers. And we are looking for any HP healing item, like at all, I'd be happy with any of them. Maybe not potion. We arrive at Sunny Shore City. We do collect items here. And thank goodness, we actually find another energy route. 
might save the run. And now we go up to Route 223 to defeat all the trainers there and collect all the items. But now, with every single route cleared in the game, except for Victory Road, and every item picked up in the game, it's time to face the eighth gym. There are six teen Pokemon to defeat in this gym before you even face Faulkner and it's time to head in and we handle the first five Pokemon very easily and then we see a slacking slacking is a demon in every Kaizo Ironmon just because his BST is so high massive special defense and it also knows Parish Song but luckily it was on the end of this kid's team but the rest of the gym actually goes really smoothly we end up facing Faulkner with 221 HP left, but it's now time to face the final gym leader. He leads with Shiv Tree, which is great for us to see. We have lasered it every single time with Aurora Beam. It's no different now. Lucario is next, which we have lasered with extra sensory every single time we've seen it. And it's no different now lasered. Electrode's the next Pokemon, which we haven't seen in forever. It survives an extra sensory. It does around half and it seismic tosses us, which will do 69 damage to us. Nice. So we extra sensory again. It doesn't get eliminated. It sleep powders us. We go Betty by, but it doesn't really matter because we have a Lumbarion, which heals every status condition. Faulkner will heal here. And I think I'm going to go for a play where I'm going to click Hydro Pump. And if it hits, extra sensory will eliminate next turn. And next turn, I click extra sensory, but the computer does something very interesting. It swaps out for Gengar, telling us that Gengar either has water absorb or dry skin, because that's the only reason the AI would do that. That's a free kill. Thank you very much, Faulkner. We see the electrode. We eliminate the Electro. Blastoise is his next Pokemon, but all we do is spam extra sensory against this bad boy. And all it does is click Aurora Beam, which we resist, and Tailwind. We do eventually eliminate it. And Faulkner's final Pokemon is Tropius, where we have a move that is four times super effective. It doesn't survive. And with that Tropius going down, it's time for our final chance to get a move that increases our special attack. And the TM that could possibly change this entire run is Lunar Dance. A totally, utterly, and completely useless move to us. Even Endure is better than that. I will now need to rely on winning this challenge with a simple Pokemon with no setup. We can now use the HM Waterfall, which allows us to get three more items. Guess what? All three of them were useless. Only have to go through Victory Road and beat the Elite Four and the Champion. And for the people that are used to the Victory Road and Fire Red, where literally you do not need to face anyone, this is the hardest Victory Road in all of Kaizo Iron Mud. There are eight mandatory battles equaling 20 Pokemon, and those Pokemon are literally higher level than Faulkner's Pokemon. My personal best lost in Victory Road. It didn't even make it to the Elite Four. Let's make it through Victory Road. The first trainer starts with a Fortress. We blast burn it. We don't really have anything else for a Fortress. Dragonite, great. But it hits us with Aurora Beam and uh, that thing did like no damage to us. And our Aurora Beam does significantly more. Moving on, the second trainer leads with a Jinx. Hydro Pump probably takes it out. So I click Hydro Pump, it misses. So I click Hydro Pump, it misses. So I click Hydro Pump, it misses. It missed three times. And then it hits, and then it doesn't even kill. That causes the Jinx to do a fair amount of damage to us. However, secondary Pokemon, Gliscor, Lasered, get it out of here. Weezing, Lasered, get it out of here. Moving on to the third trainer who has a Giraffe Rig, which we laser, and a Fortress, again, okay. Uh, which we also blast burn and laser. The fourth trainer only has one singular Pokemon. Thank goodness. It's a cast form. I'm not taking chances. I click blast burn. It's out of here. Fifth trainer leads with a Vileplume. Lasered every single one of those. Laser this one. Second Pokemon, Delcaddy. Also easy. Also laser. Third Pokemon, Mawile. Light work. Blast burn. I'm not even taking any chances. We get to the sixth trainer and they lead with one of the Pokemon that I could consider 
a run ender Suicune. It still has Earthquake and its special defense is still ridiculous. But we don't really have anything but extra sensory against this thing. So when everything is said and done, we are down to 83 HP. And his second Pokemon is a Steelix. I Blast Burn, it's out of here. And now I'm stuck in a tough decision. We have two more trainers to face, both with three Pokemon, so six Pokemon total. And the next trainer is where I lost the last time I was here. So am I going to guarantee my ticket to the Elite Four, or I'm going to risk it to save a healing item? And honestly, the way I normally play, I risk it almost every single time just to save heals, especially when we don't have that many heals like in this scenario. However, I already think that Morty might get eliminated in the Elite Four pretty quickly and pretty easily. So I decide to heal here just to get a new personal best. So I run into a wild Pokemon because you have to heal in battle, but it doesn't have to be against a trainer. It can be against a wild Pokemon as well. Heal up against it, and we're on to face the seventh trainer. Leads with a Sunflora, which survives an Aurora Beam. So we just Aurora Beam it again. No worries. And the second Pokemon he has is a Deoxys Defense, which, by the way, survives a Blast Burn. So we Aurora Beam just to do some chip damage to it, and it Calm Minds. So now I know if we were to click Blast Burn this turn, it wouldn't kill. I want to make sure that we're still doing pretty decent damage to it, though. So I click Hydro Pump here instead of Aurora Beam. And then we finish it off next turn with Blast Burn, which leads to his final Pokemon, Love Disk, which, for some odd reason, just spams taunt the entire time. And now with me defeating that trainer, this is my new personal best for Kaizo Ironmon Platinum. But there is still another trainer to face before we get out of here. The eighth trainer leads with a Masquerain. We laser it. Then a Meginium, and we laser it. And the third Pokemon is a Pidgeot, and although we don't one-shot it, it doesn't do any damage to us. And we eliminate it meaning we have just made it through Victory Road, which also means that Hyper Potion that we used against that Babarel was completely useless. However, there is one final item to pick up, and of course it's useless. All that stands between us and Morty being a Kaizo Ironmon champion is six more battles. And you might be wondering, six? What? Elite Four? Champion. There's also a rival fight right before you go into the Elite Four. <laughs> His first Pokemon is a Dugong, which is a Pokemon that we have already seen entirely too many times. Uh, we are not going to Blast Burn this because I don't want a free turn for his second Pokemon. And it scary faces, but it misses. That was going great. Second Pokemon. T-Tar, Hydro Pump, Laser, easy. Third Pokemon is Laloon, who has a ton of HP and special defense, but it does miss a Thunder. Can this luck continue into the Elite Four? Arcanine comes out, we don't overthink it. Hydro Pump, Lasered, Nine Tails, don't overthink it. Hydro Pump, Laser. And his final Pokemon, his Pillow Swine that he got out of the briefcase, which now is a Rhyperior, gets lasered by Hydro Pump. And with that, it's time to face the Elite Four. I believe our only healing items are a Hyper Potion, a Full Restore, and a Regular Potion. X items, we have four Dire Hits. I think we have two X Accuracies. X Defend, X Special Defense, and one X Special. We don't need to worry about status conditions at all. We have so much stuff to heal off status, it's crazy. But without further ado, Aaron who leads with a Sunflora. We know Sunflora will survive an Aurora Beam and they amnesia doubling their special defense. I'm on that Copium. I believe that Aurora Beam will eliminate at this HP. Guess what? It doesn't. It hits us with Rock Slide. We do know Aaron's going to heal here. I don't want to deal with this Sunflora so much. So I'm going to click Blast Burn. We missed the first Blast Burn, but it doesn't really matter because we have two chances for it. We hit the second one. It's eliminated. And Aaron's next Pokemon will have a free turn against us, Quillfish. And this is scary because Quillfish could hit us with a monstrous move, but they click Poison Jab instead, which is still a strong move, but it's not nearly as powerful as Head Smash is. But the real problem is we know Extra Sensory doesn't kill here. However, 
Luck is on our side, baby, and we get a flinch, making it a free elimination next turn. Hitmonlee now comes out. Lasered. We see Shivtree again. Oh my gosh, this is like literally one of the best Pokemon for us to see. It also gets lasered. And Aaron sends out Skarmory, which earlier in the game, I actually have this marked for low special defense. Now here, I don't believe Aurora Beam will actually one-shot this Skarmory, but I do believe that Hydro Pump 100% will, leading to Aaron's final Pokemon, Ludicolo. And we have not seen Ludicolo the entire run, but this is also Aaron's last Pokemon. We don't really need to worry about clicking Blast Burn here, and it does delete. That is one elite four member down. 24 more Pokemon to defeat. Next up is Bertha, and she leads with yet another Pokemon we love to see, Armaldo. And every single one of these haven't gotten eliminated by Hydro Pump. No, they've been eliminated by Extra Sensor. And I believe that this one is no different. Lasered. Next Pokemon is Victory Bell, and another Pokemon that has been getting eliminated by Extra Sensories. Not this one, however, but they did waste their turn. They clicked Lucky Chant, which is a move that makes it so you can't crit the opposing team for five turns. However, we definitely put this Victory Bell in the heal range, but that doesn't matter. They'll heal, we'll hit them that turn, and then the next turn, we move first and hit them again. Drapion is next, and we know that this has really high special defense, but I also believe this thing has nothing for us. So I click Aurora Beam, hoping that we put it into enough of a range to click Hydro Pump in the next turn. And Drapion uses Attack Order. And now we go to Hydro Pump to eliminate it, and it just doesn't miss. Flareon, we just click Hydro Pump because we just want to get it out of here. And it doesn't miss. Lucario is next, and we've seen quite a few Lucarios. All of them going down to Extra Sensory. We click Extra Sensory. It doesn't eliminate. And it does put it in the Citrus Berry range. And it chooses not to hit us. It uses Bulk Up. With that amount of HP left, I'm not so confident that Extra Sensory is going to eliminate here. I click Hydro Pump so we're not stuck for a turn after. And it hits. The Lucario goes down. And Agron is Bertha's final Pokemon. Hydro Pump, super effective. However, I kind of want to save some Hydro Pump PP before I need to start using some like elixirs, lepas. So I click Blast Burn instead. However, the Agron barely survived, but it only hits us with a signal beam, which the worst thing that could do is confuse us, but that didn't happen. And although the AI gets a free turn here, they heal every single time when they're this low on HP. But now we just click Hydro Pump because we know for sure it will eliminate. The second Elite Four member goes down. 18 more Pokemon to face. And Flint is up next. And Flint leads with a Togekiss. We've seen a few of these and it has been eliminated by Aurora Beam every single time, including this one. He sends out Torterra. I love that for him. Aurora Beam, four times super effective, lasered. Flint now takes a page out of Bertha's book and has a level 83 Lucario. And considering that Bertha and Flint, both Elite Four members, probably have the same exact AI, it will most likely press bulk up when I click extra sensory. I click extra sensory. Guess what? It mother freaking bulks up, baby. And unlike Bertha's Lucario, I know this doesn't have a citrus berry on it because Flint's ace is level 86. So we eliminate it with another extra sensory. Flint now sends out his second toad kiss. I'm perfectly okay with that. This one also croaks to an Aurora Beam. Swampert is his next Pokemon, which we haven't seen in forever. But from what I can remember, we did one shot it with Extra Sensory and we click Extra Sensory here. And although Extra Sensory did not flinch, they missed Charge Beam. The luck going on in the Elite Four right now is insane. I click Extra Sensory again, and that's the smallest health bar that I've ever seen. The Swampert is Flint's ace, and it does have a Citrus Berry on it, and it used Soft Boil, so it healed back a ton of HP. We click Extra Sensory again, but now it shows its true colors. It has Perish Song. However, we know the next Extra Sensory will eliminate. We just have to hope that Flint's final Pokemon 
can easily be lasered. And Flint's last Pokemon is Roserade. I snap, click, blast burn. That's three elite four members down, 12 Pokemon to go. We only need to defeat Lucian and Cynthia. And Lucian leads with one of the few Pokemon we don't really have coverage for. Another Sharpedo. However, it having Drizzle does make this battle a little bit easier. But the trade-off, our Blast Burn is significantly weaker now. Hydro Pump does around half its HP. And the Cotton Spores, it still has this move, lowering our speed by two stages. This guarantees that we are basically gonna be slower than every single Pokemon. But now I take the gamble and set up a dire hit this turn. And it hits us with Thunderbolt. And once again, Sharpedo has like no special attack. That's so little damage. I set up another battle item, Guard Spec. It's an item that makes it so your stats can't go down for the next five turns. And I do this so I can use both the X speeds I have to get my speed back. And one of the Thunderbolts that he hits us with does paralyze us, but we have a Lumberry attached. Come on, get it out of here. I take this opportunity to use our Hyper Potion as well. However, next turn, I throw. I forgot that it's raining outside and I click blast burn. We send it into heal range. And also on this turn, our guard spec runs out. Now, since I know this Sharpedo is going to be around for much longer, I set up another guard spec. I use a max elixir here so I can get all my PP back. Pokemon power. And this Sharpedo is spamming cotton sport. It wants to lower our speed so bad and we just spam Hydro Pump and get rid of this thing. But Barrel is the next Pokemon. Morty wanted to make sure that this thing was going down and hit a crit with a little bit of help from the dire hit. Charizard comes out and let's not overthink it. We click Hydro Pump and it's eliminated. Furret comes out and it's Lucian's ace. Furret has crazy special defense and HP. In turn one, they teeter dance. But turn two, we break through and crit them, sending them into Citrus Berry range. They hit us with Aura Sphere, one of the best moves in the game, and it does 50 damage to us. The next turn, we actually snap out of Confusion, and I guess the computer can tell the future because for some odd reason, they click Teeter Dance here, but luckily Morty breaks through and hits another critical extra sensory, and they use Teeter dance again. Okay, maybe they can't tell the future. They're just morons. And although this is heal range for this Pokemon, Lucian will not use a healing item here. Ironically, pressing that blast burn and making them waste their healing item on that Sharpedo benefited us here. Because although Lucian has two healing items, they won't use the second healing item until they're down to two Pokemon. That Blast Burn was bad in that moment, but my goodness, I am happy that I hit that. So I click Extra Sentry here, and guess what? Morty doesn't hit themselves and eliminates the Furret. This might be the best luck I have ever had in Pokemon in my entire life. Next Pokemon is Probopass, and don't overthink it, we just click Hydro Pump and we break through confusion again. But this time we do actually miss Hydro Pump. I knew it was gonna happen eventually. And we're punished with Mirror Shot. It didn't seem like it did that much damage. And next turn, we snap out of confusion and we hit Hydro Pump. Lucian's final Pokemon, Volbeat. A great Pokemon to see, quite literally, one of the weakest Pokemon that he could possibly have. I take this opportunity to use a Max Ether to get all our hydro pumps back. It uses growth. And I click blast burn here because one, it's super effective. Even though we're still in the rain, I think it's still good enough to eliminate it. It doesn't take them out. They use growth again and they have a free turn. They hit us with wing attack, which is interesting to me because growth in this game does not raise attack and special attack. It only raises special attack. So we blast burn again. The Volby is defeated. And that is all the members of the Elite Four defeated. There is one trainer left. The champion, Cynthia. We still have a full restore. We still have our X special. It is now time to face Cynthia. Cynthia leads with a Lapras which is a very scary Pokemon for us. Lapras has been getting defeated very easily by extra sensories. And I'm sitting here thinking, this Lapras could probably laser us. It might very well possibly 
The feed us in one hit. So I click blast burn. It hits. It goes down. Five Pokemon left. Cynthia sends out a lantern. And with its free turn, it uses ring out. However, we know that move gets significantly weaker the lower our HP is. I look at this lantern as this is my moment. This is our moment to set up Morty as strong as we possibly can. I use an X special. And remember, we're simple, baby. That X special raises our special attack by two stages, essentially doubling our special attack. Lantern hits us with a faint attack. It only does 20. I set up an X special defense, essentially doubling our special defense. Faint attack again. I set up a dire hit. Faint attack again. I set up an X defend, doubling our defense. And now the lantern shows its true colors. A cheese lord. It used sand attack on us, lowering our accuracy. I use an X accuracy. They faint attack us again. I take this opportunity to top ourselves off. I use our one and only full restore. And of course, after we use the full restore, they hit us with a crit faint attack. I mean, it still doesn't do that much damage, but like it's the principle. And now since my HP is maxed out, I actually believe this lantern is going to hit ring out. It's by far their strongest move now. And I want to capitalize off of this fact by using an X accuracy so our blast burns and our hydro pumps are 100% accurate. They use sand attack instead. It's time to get rid of this fish. We click extra sensory. I expect this fish to actually survive this, but Morty didn't. Morty crit. Four Pokemon left. Cast form, an easy one shot from a double powered extra sensory. Three Pokemon left. Sableye. It also goes down in one hit. Two Pokemon left. Cynthia is getting desperate. She sends out our brother, Magmortar. But we know our stat distribution. Our special defense is not great. Extra sensory. Lasered. One final Pokemon left. Brongzong. We have one clear move to hit, and it's been with us the entire game, and we easily defeat Cynthia, making Morty a Kaizo Ironmon champion and giving me my third ring. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching because these videos take forever to make. So long, in fact, this is my third Kaizo Ironmon win ever. I am up to seven. So uh, please subscribe uh, or watch one of the other videos if this is the first time you've ever seen my channel. Thanks. Bye.